Hi, I'm Ilkatis from Ilkatis.me and this is another Gravity Forms tutorial. This time we're going to look at styling the asterisk or the required field asterisk in Gravity Forms. And we'll start off, we look at this form we've got here. We're in Form Editing Gravity Forms in our WordPress website. We've got two fields. We've got a single line text field and a radio buttons field. And you can see there's an asterisk here. If I open this up, you'll see we have checked the required box here, which means that people have to fill in this field when they're on your site. And this form has an ID number of four. We've embedded this form into a post and you can see it here and you can see we have two fields and they have this asterisk, this red asterisk there. And that's what we're going to look at styling now. We need to go into appearance and then editor in our WordPress dashboard. And then we need to be in a style.css style sheet. And if it doesn't open it by default, it'll be one of these options down the right. So we go right to the bottom of our style sheet and we'll start adding some custom CSS to target this asterisk in our gravity form. So we start off with So we're targeting the individual form on this page, on this, gravity, on this um, website. And it has a form ID of four, like I showed before. But if you didn't want to target just a single individual form and wanted to target every single form we do on our site, we simply remove this ID at the end and we remove this hash and start with a dot. And then that does a global effect to all forms in your site. But we want to target this individual form. So I'll put that ID back in. So we start off with body hash g form underscore wrapper underscore id of your form then g form underscore body and this says it's in the body area of the form and dot g form underscore fields and dot g field and dot g field underscore label this is just working through all the different sections all different divs to break it down right to the element we're looking to target which is this last one here which is dot g field underscore quiet okay so that's the code it's quite a long bit of code but that's just breaking it down and finding where this required asterisk field is so we've got it now we've targeted it so we now need to do some CSS styling. So we've got our open and close curly brackets. And in here, we'll first of all, we'll change the color because by default it's red. So we'll just change it to blue just to show that we can target it and do this. So we just type in color, blue. And it's as if you're targeting a font or text because asterisk is text on your site. So we just say, we want to change the color of this font or the color of this asterisk to blue. And then we'll just go into our post and then we'll refresh the page. And you'll see the asterisk has turned blue. So we go back into the styling. We'll do a couple more things just to see that we can. We'll make this bigger, this asterisk bigger because it's quite small. So we just go font size because remember it is a font. And we'll say 40 pixels and that'll make it large. There we go, we've got a nice big blue asterisk now. Um, there are occasions where you might, might want all fields to be filled out, but you might not want to show this asterisk because it, it doesn't look good in your form, or you might want to just write some text underneath saying this field's required without showing the asterisk. So while it's a required field, we want to make this disappear. So we can do that by going into our styling again and just simply going display none and again if you refresh the page you see these asterisks has disappeared from the form even though these are still required fields so if someone submits it it won't let them submit the form it'll say error you need to fill in these fields but we're just not showing the asterisks 
And while we're here, I just want to show you that you can actually target each of these fields individually. So at the moment, all the CSS styling we're doing is affecting both of these fields, but there may be occasions where you just want to affect one, but not the other. And to do this, you can go into your form, So here's our form. We have our field. You see that this field has an ID of one and this field has an ID of three. So we'll say, okay, we just want our styling to apply to this bottom one here, which has an ID of three, but not to the top one. So what we can do is we can specifically target this element. Or actually what we'll do is we'll target both of them, but with different styling. So I'll go back into my style sheet and you see we have all this styling here. So I'll get rid of this display norm because we want to actually show something. And first of all, we look at targeting the first field, which has an ID of one. But what we do is we remove this specific part here. So we remove the ID of the form and replace the hash with a dot. And then we go to this section, and this is where we target the specific field in the form. So we move the dot G at the front and put a hash. And then here is where we put our targeting. So we've got underscore four, so we're targeting form number four, then we go underscore one because we're targeting field one. And we finish it with dot G field. So this is now targeting form four field number one. So we'll just copy that and we'll paste all this code below and we'll change that one to a three because the radio button field was field number three. And then just so we've got a difference, I'll change this blue to yellow and then I'll change this 40 pixels to 100 pixels. So we're gonna have a big yellow button for that one. So we're gonna have a blue asterisk and a big yellow asterisk for the other field. So I'll update that. Go back to our form and then refresh. And there we go. Okay, so there you have it. Just a quick tutorial showing you how to target the required field asterisk in gravity forms. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel so you get updates as soon as I've got new videos ready for you. Also make sure you head over to my website which is www.neilcurtis.me where you'll find lots more tutorials and guides. And make sure you sign up to my email list because that's where I tell you first about anything new happening on my website.